Welcome to this presentation. Thank you for your interest. My name is Sebastian Klötzer. I'm an application engineer at Nexperia. And today I want to talk to you about the evaluation of copper clip high voltage GAN power semiconductors for high power switching converters. So first I want to give you an overview why we want to talk about this today. Um, and it's really about um, demanding applications that we uh, are talking about in this uh, presentation. And it's a high voltage um, application talk. So we are discussing high voltage package uh, landscape and the advantages that a copper clip brings in this high voltage application region. And of course, uh, not only about the package, but we want to evaluate our devices in application. So hard switching evaluation and continuous operation is the next part. And I want to close with the conclusion and the outlook. So starting, I think, um, where at PCIM, everyone knows the benefits of wide band gap devices. And well, with benefits, there are also come some challenges, especially with gallium nitride. We can switch very fast with high DVDTs, high DIDTs, and the packages uh, come into focus. There is um, a reason why many manufacturers went to g do their own package design with gallium nitride. And we as Nixperia, we have um, the package that is shown in the middle, a copper clip package, uh, bottom side, top side cooling version, SMD package. Um, that is targeted especially for demanding high power applications. Um, why is it important to have such a good package? Um, first, on the top left, you see, obviously, we need to have good switching performance, so low parasitics are very important. But also, um, one thing that is sometimes overlooked is conduction. Um, the package needs to be very low RDS, so we don't want to add, if we have a low RDS on part, a lot by using a certain package type. Then, of course, the thermal performance is important as well. Um, mentioning SMD packaging, um, topside cooling is certainly an interesting part because we don't need to route our heat through the bottleneck that is a PCB. So this is uh, also an important aspect to mention here. Then another thing, robustness and reliability. So um, power cycling, temperature cycling are questions often asked in the automotive industry. And for that, um, we need to be ready, especially with SMD devices. And also manufacturing, so things like automated optical inspection or um, the way how we attach a heatsink to it, these are also quite critical when designing a package for these fast devices. So giving you a bit of a landscape for high voltage devices here, on the left side you can see, well, I would say traditional through hole packaging, TO247, um, three or four leads is a typical package that has been used for decades now. It's a robust, it's a reliable package. Um, of course, there are some drawbacks, especially in the switching and uh, conduction aspect, mainly it's high inductance. The, the package inductance is very high for these devices, so they limit a bit the performance that we can get out. And um, these are typically bond wire packages, so we have a certain amount of package resistance as well that will limit very low RDS on parts. Um, but in thermal performance, in robustness, reliability, and also manufacturing, if we take out the through hole aspect that make manufacturing a bit more complicated, these devices are still very good and reliable. Now on the other side of the spectrum, if we have a look at the chip scale devices uh, that mainly popped up with gallium nitride in the high power regime, um, these devices are very small, have very, very low uh, package inductance, which is very nice to have for a good switching conversion and switching efficiency. Also very low package resistance, so it is as close as we can get to the chip, which is good. Um, and if we use a type like this, we can use for um, topside cooling a very low thermal resistance as well very close to the classical TO247 packages, but there are some drawbacks. We cannot do this uh, automated optical inspection that we would like to do uh, in manufacturing, and uh, topside cooling heatsink attachment is challenging because these devices are so thin. And another thing is uh, we don't have leads outside of the package, so board level reliability is critical when we have expansion and um, temperature cycles, these packages cannot really uh, take as much as a leaded part can in terms of um, yeah, reliability. Now in the middle, the traditional SMD and to the right, the copper clip SMD, these are very similar in terms of how they are built. They are good packages with um, good switching performance. 
decent thermal performance if we go for top side cooling again. Bottom side cooling, always the same problem going through the PCB that will limit us. Um, then again, robustness, reliability. Um, if we have gull wings on the outside, they can take some of that stress during thermal and power cycling. If we don't have it and we have an overmolded package, that might be limited here. And again, in manufacturing, um, automated optical inspection for these Galvin packages, that works well. Um, heatsink attachment can always be a challenge in topside cooling, though. Um, but I want to go a bit more into detail here on this part, why there is a copper clip advantage when we look at this uh, middle column. On the left side, we see um, the copper clip package that we are proposing in comparison to the standard D-pack um, that is typically seen on the market for these high power, high voltage applications. And there are some dedicated um, differences. First is we have a high copper cross section that we can use with a copper clip attachment. We can really tailor our copper clip exactly to the chip that we use. While with a bond wire connection, we always need to have some separation distance and we have to, well, follow the, the guidelines for a bond wire attachment. That will limit um, the copper cross section, so we have lower package resistance with the copper clip and can supply higher currents. But also we will have less current crowding at the surface where these bond wires are attached, so we don't get these hotspots. Um, another advantage is we have a good copper connection on the top, so we have lower thermal impedance as well, so improved pulse handling capability. And with a tailored clip geometry, we also can supply lower package inductance. So overall, some small but very significant improvements. Um, looking a bit more into board level reliability, and um, this is a very important aspect for rugged applications. Uh, you can see here the comparison of a fully enclosed package in the top and this CC pack um, that we propose on the bottom. And after 2,000 temperature cycles from minus 40 degrees to plus 125 degrees, you can see the cross section here. There is some uh, solder lift off. There can also be some mold component damage that we don't see in the package with these gull wings where the leads can take up some of that stress. So that is really important, especially for the automotive industry with this package. Looking a bit further inside of the package, um, we do want to evaluate fast switching devices and we package uh, a gallium nitride cascode in that package. It's a 33 milliohm device. Um, it's a combination of a high voltage depletion mode hemp and a 30 volt silicon MOSFET. And there are some benefits to it, mainly very good switching performance, but um, typically high junction temperature that we can supply. We're planning to get these devices ready with AEC Q101 qualification. So these are really targeted um, towards the automotive industry. And some other aspects, very low inductance below 2.4 nano Henrys, which makes sure that we can get good switching performance here, um, not only in theory, and a very robust gate. So these are devices that can be turned on from 0 to 10 or 0 to 12 volts reliably, and there is no parasitic turn-on problem, so we can use standard MOSFET gate drivers. Now, how do we evaluate these devices? We use a double pulse platform, our evaluation platform for these, and it's really a classical half bridge with a current sensor, some um, MLCC capacitance on the inside to have a low loop inductance overall, uh, sub 5 nano Henrys on, on this layout, you can see the top side in the middle and the bottom side where the top side cooled devices are sitting. Um, we do have some fixed measurement access, so we can have repeatable measurements with low distortion, which is very important. And um, the board can also be modified, so we not only can do double pulse testing, but also thermal investigation, which is nice to check whether your thermal solution is good with these top side devices and continuous operation works as well. Just to show you some switching waveforms at 400 volts, um, going from 10 to 40 amps, I think you can see quite well on the left side at turn on, on the right side at turn off. Um, well, there is not much ringing going on. We have clean waveforms, very low overshoot. Here on the right side, you can see it's roughly 20 volts at 400 volts when we turn off at 40 amps. So these are very clean waveforms with low ringing. And also, um, if we look further into the variation versus temperature, 
which is important because typically these devices don't switch always at room temperature, we can see that there is very little change in the behavior in these devices when you go to, for example, 150 degrees Celsius. So the, the current peak that we see at turn on in the middle, which is proportional to reverse recovery, stays mainly the same. The main differences that we see is a slight decrease in the IDT and a slight change in uh, threshold voltage. And this is also true for the turn off, but you can see the, the curves very, uh, align very well here. So it's not so much difference that we need to expect. And you can see when we look at the switching losses, of course, we have um, turn on losses, which are typically higher for each device type. Um, you can see that the IDT change leads to a slight increase in turn on loss here. Um, but it's not substantial, really. And at turn off, when we go up to 30 amps, there is virtually, virtually no real change to be expected here. Now. Going from the switching losses to the continuous operation, we need to make some changes. We need to bypass our uh, shunt because that will not be ready for continuous operation. And we need to make sure that we attach our device to the heatsink. Uh, we've evaluated some different, evaluate, um, some different combinations. We started with aluminum nitride. We also used aluminum oxide and some gap fillers. We've tested many more. Um, you always need to make sure that you can fill these small gaps in the setup to make sure that you have a good tight connection to the heatsink with these topside cooled devices. And the best solution we found uh, currently was aluminum nitride with a total resistance of 1.3 kelvins per watt. Now, if we compare that with a bottom side cooled um, variant where we go through the PCB, it's four to six. Um, Kelvins per watts usually. So it's a substantial improvement, and we can get more than 100 watts in this case out of such a small package. Now, um, if we look at the efficiency, it's just a, a simple buck converter test 400 to 230 volts. Um, here, a comparison that you can see from zero to six kilowatts. Um, we have one version on the air cooled uh, with a small six by six centimeter fan. Um, and one version on the cold plate that you can see on the left-hand side. And um, there is, well, a good efficiency, I would say, beyond 99.1% with these devices in this test. So wide 400 to 30, well, it's basically an equivalent to something that could be a PFC stage, like a totem pole PFC, where we have 230 volts grid voltage. So it's just to evaluate in rather similar conditions here. Um, you can see there is some slight difference. Um, that is just because the air-cooled air version has a higher thermal resistance, which makes the difference at high power. And it really shows the, the benefits of using a topside cooled package here because, well, you can stay well beyond 98.5% uh, of efficiency, even up to the highest uh, power. And it's really limited by um, the measurement setup here, unfortunately, and not by the device. Now, if we look towards higher currents and higher power, um, there is plenty of space still in this package. So we are also investigating lower RDS on parts. And here, it's really important to have this low package resistance. So we have a 12 milliohm prototype currently in this package. And we're thinking about going lower even. And you can see, again, here, switching at 50 amps, very clean switching waveforms, again, fast transitions. Um, but if you need higher power, well, you can always think about paralleling. And we have one of the paralleling demonstrator PCBs that switches up to 200 amps at our booth. So if you are interested in discussing and checking those out, feel free to come around. In a bit, I will tell more. Um, just want to wrap up now. Um, the modern copper clip package, it can um, combine the requirements that we really need for demanding applications. We want clean switching waveforms, but we also want low thermal resistance, excellent board level reliability, and some ease of manufacturing to make sure that we really can use all the benefits of this device. Um, I've shown you some results from hard switching, uh, a 33 milliohm cascode GAN device in this presentation, but a further power increase is to be expected in the near future. And I was a bit too quick. Um, if you want to have a chat and discuss some of these results, feel free to come around our booth. I'm happy to meet you there. It's in Hall 9, booth 317. Or, well, have a look at our website. And with that, I would like to uh, close this talk. And I'm happy to hear your question, if there are any. <laughs>